Hi, welcome to this edition of On Tap, presented by FCSI of the Americas. I'm Wade Kaler, Executive Director. On Tap this week with me is a uh, decorated veteran, one of the coolest FCSI members that I know. And by cool, I mean the most even-keeled, uh, nicest guys you're going to meet uh, when it comes to the FCSI uh, family. He's a board member of FCSI and a longtime volunteer to the association. Please welcome the owner of Commercial Kitchen Consulting, Mr. Mike Berard. Hi, Mike. Hey, Wade. What's going on today? Not much, man. Thank you so much for joining us. It's uh, it's great to see you today. Uh, you know, as a board member, we usually see each other a few times a year. And for the last year, we really haven't seen each other at all, except for via no. Skype and Zoom and whatever other message or uh, methods we can use. Um, yeah, it's been kind of weird. So for, sure. for for our our series, uh, especially this first season, we're just kind of getting to know our members a little bit um, within FCSI. And so I'm starting off, everybody, with kind of the basics, and that is, how did you get your start as a food service consultant? I mean, what was your path to the consulting industry? Well, I uh, I ended up earning a uh, an associate's degree in construction technology, and one of the courses that I really loved was architectural drafting. Back then, there wasn't CAD or anything. And so I ended up getting a job at the University of Binghamton as an architectural draftman. And about two years into it, it wasn't a permanent job. It was it was a state job, but it was a, a part-time, um, not a full position job. And I heard about a small mom-and-pop dealership, um, and they had an opening for a draftsman. So I left this state job to go to work for a small mom and pop dealership and actually started rolling a pencil within the first week on a huge IBM project that was about a million, $1.1 million. And this was in 1984. Oh, wow. So that was a pretty good sized job for 1984. Yeah. And I just kind of fell in love with the industry and, and the people and, um, that was really kind of my start. And, you know, that was, you know, 36 what, years ago and uh, still still cranking it out. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, especially when you get to start with something that big. Um, yeah, exactly. It was overwhelming, though, I, at first. <laughs> you know, I think there was like 26 sheets of wow. drawings. And back then you had a, the electric eraser yeah. with a little template in so if you changed one, you had to go to all the other sheets to change <laughs> and made a modification. It was it was interesting. It was definitely uh, uh, thrown into the fire for sure. Yeah. First. Yep. Um, definitely was. With, with your firm that you got, is there any specialties that you stay within, like segments of the industry? Well, um, I'm a service disabled veteran, so we're set up as a service disabled veteran owned small business. Okay. Uh, both through CVE, which is the federal government. Um, we're under New York State and applying for Pennsylvania right now. Um, with that, it allows us to, there are some set aside, uh, with SDVOSB set aside projects with the VA that we team with other architects and engineers that are SDVOSB, have an SDVOSB status, and, um, and we team up with them. Um, with respect to other projects and things, I, we, we generally do a lot of healthcare, design a lot of healthcare projects. Um, K through 12 is pretty steady right now, but I like doing unusual projects, you know, because really? it, you get caught in the, it's not cookie cutter, but it, you get caught in the, the same thing kind sure. of over and over and over with, with a, like a typical K through 12 school. Um, so we like to do different projects. Um, okay. One of which we, it appears that we're going to be in the, um, FCSI's uh, project showcase uh, this year. Uh, we've been awarded the uh, one, you know, our, our project was awarded to be um, or selected to be in it. Sure. And um, it happened to be Green Star. It's kind of a co-op grocery store chain in Ithaca, oh. New York. Nice. Um, really cool project where we've got um, a lot of the marketing there was done by a company in Washington and they really brought up a, a a home feel to the store where they had a lot of local people, um, photos of a lot of local people in the uh, local markets and waterfalls. And it was really, it's kind of a cool concept, but nice. in that we ended up designing the commissary kitchen, uh, did all the beverage cases, all the cheese cases, all the frozen food, um, all the merchandising and displays, there's a sushi station, 
um, deli station, uh, you know, coffee uh, station as well. So we really, that was kind of a cool job nice. to really get involved with, um, with Green Star on. Nice. What did your experience in, in your military uh, background teach you about food service? Really, you know, attention to detail, I think, was the was the biggest thing. Um, one thing about food service, it's it's an assembly, you know, that the whole space you have to organize. You have to really sit down and talk to the end user and, and find out what their concept is and then try to blend the equipment in the space into their concept. Um, the other thing is really listening. You know, one of the things that I at one point I was a commanding officer for about 650 uh, um, sailors. And one of the things I learned was you listen to people. You make a decision based on the scenario or listening to them. Um, but it was really listening to people that have have knowledge and expertise and then kind of blending that into your, whatever your response or, or uh, decision is going to end up being. Thanks. I never had the chance to serve in the military. So I have to ask this. What was, what's the feel like the very first time you put on your, your formal dress uniform and look at yourself in the mirror? It, it was actually pretty cool. I was in the Marine Corps. Um, I had been in about two and a half years. Uh, went from Iwakuni, Japan to uh, Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. And I was a pretty sharp kid and, and fit. And I ended up getting selected to be on the uh, Camp Lejeune base color guard detail. And there's four people on the detail and then four were supernumerary in case something happened to the other four, uh, the original four. And I ended up being uh, honored enough to carry the American flag. Um, and that's when I got my full Marine dress blues. I was a corporal at the time, which is an E4. And we marched and um, inspecting general uh, parades, commanding general parades, change of commands. We did a governor's uh, inauguration. Wow. Uh, the greatest part of it was we ended up being chaperones for beauty pageants. <laughs> and that was awesome. I'm telling you, we had such a good time. Nice. But that that was, you know, and, and even... Even when I retired, uh, I ended up being in the Navy Seabees um, and retired as a Chief Warrant Officer 4 in my full dress white uniform. And, and, and I was just so proud to be in the military and to, to really have accomplished um, what I accomplished in the, uh, uh, you know, in the service. Not only that, but I think it was more, I, I ended up being more of a mentor towards the end. And that, I think, probably was the pinnacle of my career, to be honest with you. Nice. Just helping others develop and then come up through the ranks. And they're still in now. A lot of them are. Nice. Speaking of, of, of mentoring, what, what would you say your greatest piece of advice would be to anyone thinking of becoming a food service consultant? That's a good question. Um, number one, I really think that you need to enjoy what you do. Yeah. If you don't enjoy being in the food service industry or you know, whether it's project management or a CAD or Revit operator, um, whatever the position happens to be, if you don't enjoy doing it, you're never going to be happy. Right. And you're never going to put your you know, heart and soul into it. So I think that's the first thing. Uh, the next thing is that I mentioned earlier, you just you got to listen to the client. You got to understand yeah. what they want, what their concept is, and, um, and then put the pencil to paper right. uh, type thing. Nice. What is the one thing that nobody would ever guess about Mike Burrard? What is like, what's that secret or that hobby or that habit that you've got that nobody would ever guess about you? Honestly, I, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I'm a hunter. I like, I like to hunt. Um, I, uh, I was on the, um, I was honored to be on the uh, Navy rifle and pistol team for almost 20 years. Oh, wow. Um, and we traveled around the country uh, shooting competitively against the other branches of service and civilians. Yeah. Uh, we, went, we went to the national uh, um, matches. Um, that probably, you know, out of that, I learned a lot about myself and uh, mental imagery and, and things that help me relax. Yeah. You know, when, when I get into a situation where I'm in front of a big client or something, there are things that I learned when I was shooting to be able to calm myself down. I understood yeah. how to do that. 
a- after a while yeah. and um, and what to think about if you're going to go in for an interview. Yeah. You know, it's all about that, you know, process on doing things over and over and over and thinking about it. And again, that mental imagery yeah. thing, you, you actually sit down and you go through, close your eyes and, and go through the different steps that you were going to talk about mm-hmm. and why your business, you know, why they, they should select you type sure. thing. Sure. So I, I would say it was the, you know, the rifle and pistol uh, competition. Nice. Well, that's all the questions I've got, uh, the formal questions that is. But I, I do like to end every interview with something uh, a little fun. Um, so I've gone through and created a uh, set of questions based on the Would You Rather game. And so if you're game, I'd like to go through some of these questions to find out what Mike's personality looks like. Sure. You ready? Go for it. All right. <laughs> Would you rather be covered in snakes or bees? Bees, without a doubt. Would you rather be able to sing or be able to dance? I can't do either, but I'll dance first. <laughs> Would you rather own a restaurant or own a dollar store? Um, probably a dollar store. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather give up TV for a year or give up the internet for a year? TV. Would you rather be able to teleport anywhere in the world or be able to read minds? I would like to read minds. Not sure I want to hear what the mind has to say, but I, I yeah. would, I'd like to read minds. Have all the traffic lights you approach turn green or never have to stand in line again? Wait, I'm colorblind, so <laughs> I may or may not see a green light. <laughs> stoplight. That stoplight is just one light to me. I'm good to go. Yeah, good. yeah exactly. <laughs> Would you rather see your future or fix your past? Um, I have no regrets about my past. All right. I would rather see my future. All right. Would you rather have unlimited first-class plane tickets or never have to pay for food at restaurants? I would rather have unlimited plane plane reservations. Would you rather only be able to use a fork and no spoon or use a spoon and no fork for the rest of your life? I would rather use my hands. (laughs) I love that. I do that a lot. I can't wait to watch you eat soup with your hands. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Would you rather be an unknown superhero or a famous villain? Um, Probably an unknown superhuman or superhero. Would you rather fight a duck the size of a horse or fight 100 horses the size of ducks? Uh, One duck. One duck? I'll take a duck on. Very good. (laughs) That's it I've got for you today, Mike. How can people find out more about you? They can can email me. Uh, It's mberard, B-E-R-A-R-D, at ckc-llc.net. Or just give me a call. Okay, perfect. Well, thanks, Mike. I really appreciate the time today. It was a lot of fun seeing you. And uh, again, I hope to get to see you again in person here very soon. Roger that. Thanks, Wade. Appreciate it. Have a great day. You too. Well, that wraps up another edition of On Tap presented by FCSI. If you enjoyed today's episode, help us get the word out. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And check back next week when we interview another FCSI member consultant. Until then, cheers. Cheers.